Welcome back to Affiliated. We have got a great episode for y'all. I am your host, Thomas McMahon, and I'm bringing two awesome media buyers who are in-house media buyers here at ClickBank, but they've done a lot of spend outside before they ever joined here. And we'll be talking about why media buying right now, we're recording this, what, August 8th, 2024, is getting pretty tough. So Jake Canute, thank you so much for joining. I just before we start, just people get to know you a little bit before we just dive into all the nerdy stuff. Jake, do you want to kick off and just kind of give like a elevator pitch for your history and yeah. why people shouldn't? Yeah, absolutely. To you? <laughs> uh, so my name's Jake. I'm the director of D2C marketing here at ClickBank. Um, background: I got started in 2016 buying ads online, primarily in the e-com space. Um, a lot of my stuff was going towards like drop shipping. That's kind of how I got started, and then um, so a lot of Facebook ads, Google ads, Google search ads. Um, and then I have also jumped into like marketplace ads on Amazon, on Walmart, Michaels, kind of across the board in the e-com space. Um, then came to ClickBank, owned a lot of our paid media for both our info product, in-house info product, um, as well as our B2B side. Um, so a lot of LinkedIn, Google search, and demand gen um, type plays. Awesome. That's a Wealth of experience, very omni. <laughs> that was the I eleven second uh, pitch. That was great. <laughs> I'm signed up. Canoe, how about you, man? Yeah, yeah. I actually had a pretty uh, similar start to Jake. Um, started a couple years later in 2018. Uh, actually, yeah, with with a lot of ecom, dropshipping, um, different stuff like that. And uh, yeah, throughout the the journey, just basically continued to uh, work in different ad channels: uh, Facebook, Google, um, YouTube, all those different ones. Um, and just continued to to try out different business ventures and also got into the agency game a little bit. Um, and uh, yeah, now I'm the in-house media buyer here at ClickBank and uh, have managed uh, a lot of our Spark uh, related uh, media buying there, um, as well as um, the the demand gen side of things as well on um, uh, getting, attracting new sellers and um, affiliates to ClickBank. So awesome. yeah. 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 Well, to make this unnecessarily competitive, like how much media are we talking here? You guys spend like... Yeah, who's who's got the bigger the bigger one dollar more bill. than whatever Canute? Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I I honestly don't know. Like, I would have to check our ad accounts, but yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. It's been it's because uh, yeah, more more of our focus has definitely shifted uh, in the latest uh, year or so to much more on the Spark side, mm -hmm. um, and so um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's tough to say. Uh, yeah, really hard to give a number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good political answer. Yeah, there. that's yeah. a good answer. Which speaking of politics, why? Is media buying so freaking hard right now? That was we, a beautiful segue. Thank yeah. you, nice job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done this before. Yeah. Uh, that was great. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. Just every year, uh, every electric election cycle, we actually do see, um, yeah, just me media buying get more and more expensive, um, and that's also kind of coupled with the fact that you know going into Q4 already, you're always going to have Black Friday um, things that heavy bidders who just come out of nowhere. Um, and continue to just drive up the ad costs. And um, so it's it's both like, yeah, definitely a, 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 the, the political thing is just another thing that adds on top of that. And um, the reason that all of this matters so much is because the uh, media buying is really just, a, it's a marketplace, right? So um, the more bidders there are, um, the more people there's gonna be driving up the price of things. And so just to get one impression, to get one eyeball on an ad, um, that's going to become just naturally costlier because um, you're comparing, you know, you're you're in a marketplace full of other people who want to um, bid against you. So more competitors, um, more bidders, um, and that goes for every channel. Gotcha. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was yeah. just going to say, like, to kind of put it in perspective, I was looking yesterday. I think this year um, political spend on social is going to hit like $14 billion mm. um, or something like that. So to put that in perspective, I think... Nobody quote me on these numbers, but um, but I want to say like it's predicted that a total Facebook advertising spend will be about 130 billion this mm -hmm. year, so that's a 10 ish plus percent swing. Um, so it's a lot. Like that's, yeah, a, that's you know when, when you're competing, yeah. and, and that like Canute just said, like it's also happening in Q4. So yeah. also that's when you know a lot of companies they'll hold you know maybe. 50% of their budget will just be for Q4. So yeah. everybody's going to start spending. Yeah. Um, and then the craziest part about it is like political spending. If, if like we look at things right now and things are getting tougher, but the reality is as you get closer to the election, um, I want to say it's like 50% of that 14 billion will get spent 30 days before the election. 
fifty percent wow. of that fifty percent, so twenty five percent of the total budget will get spent ten days before mm, the gosh. election. So yeah. what? So what's, what's? I've been hearing this whole year basically that man things are getting tougher. Like the CPMs are going creeping up, but we're not even close to Q. I mean, I guess we're it's August. We're kind of close to Q four, I guess now. Yeah. But like, yeah. what's been happening? Is it just been slow increases in political spending that's coming up? Are there other things happening? Like, why is there just been this like struggle? across the board almost, it seems like with every affiliate we chat with, it's just like, wow, this is getting tight. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I definitely think it's, yeah, both of those just really coming yeah. into play and, and as they begin to ramp up, you'll just, it just is noticeable. Um, yeah. and, and, and just starting off, like the CPM is like always kind of the metric that I look at where it's like, you know, cost per, I can't remember the exact, it's like a Rome, it's like a Latin term for uh, 1000 impressions. <laughs> I forgot what the word is, but anyway, CPM, cost per 1000 impressions. That's like one of the first things that you look at as somebody who's a media buyer, um, because it really just kind of understands like uh, it helps you understand what is setting the tone for the for everything else, um, all your metrics, it's what everything else is based off of to make at the end of the day your funnel profitable or not. Um, and so being able to just like watch that and understand if it's going up or if it's going down. Uh, but I think that's just yeah, it's just been noticeably going up is what I've seen. Yeah, I, I mean, I so I think it's a couple of things. So I think what Canute said, like year over year, CPMs are always up and to the right. Like they're always climbing year right. over year. Um, so that's one thing. You have the political side of things um, that spend will start throughout the year, especially with we have so mm -hmm. many elections just across the world this year for not just presidential elections, mm -hmm. right? There's Senate, mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's that. There's also, I think, um, there's also just changes, I think, like macro from a macro perspective in terms of like, people are probably tightening Money up their wallets yeah. a little tighter, bit. Like, yeah. That's a big, that's a big thing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And so, yeah, when you look at, especially in the U S if that's where a lot of your customers are coming from, like people have tightened up a little bit. It's, it's, well, it's no, happening well, across then, the board. I mean, the U S market too has been largely doing better than most of the global economy. Mm -hmm. So it's like, right. So if you're looking at a world macro lens versus a U.S. lens, it's probably been slowed for a while. Now the U.S. is starting to kind of catch up. Right? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Feds aren't sure. really lowering rates as fast as people would like. They're still trying to land that very delicate airplane. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, doing the best yeah. they can. Yeah. There's also like I will say as time goes on, and I think we'll get into this more later, but. Um, there's a lot more uh, like relevancy scores, quality scores mm -hmm. on Facebook when it comes to, uh, specifically on Facebook when it comes to yeah. um, the ads and creatives that you're putting out mm -hmm. um, that are a little bit more, um, a, they're a little bit harder to crack than I think they used to be, right? Like typically how things go is that um, it's kind of the same thing with compliance. When these, when these, a lot of these uh, platforms start, the compliance are a little bit loose yes. and then as they get more dollars, it kind of like, constricts a little bit yeah and so we saw that with like youtube and yep. a lot of our a bunch of people media buyers YouTube, yeah. exactly mm -hmm. they did really really well google starts cranking down and now things get a little bit tougher right so mm -hmm. that's directly going to affect cost per purchases things like that mm -hmm. um, the same is true for like ad relevance quality relevance that type of thing so mm -hmm. as facebook as as google as whatever their kind of platforms get better at saying like yeah. this is a targeted user this is the most quality uh, piece of content for them, it gets mm -hmm. harder for you when you're making your ad creative yeah. to compete against that. And so if you're not winning that, then your CPMs are going to be higher. Yeah. 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 Two things I'd add there is that I think the outside of like the CPM math and bidders going against it, I think when you see like an election year and the news cycle and just there's a lot of distractions for eyeballs mm -hmm. for online, sure. right? Like yep. my, yep. <laughs> my texts have been blowing up from political donors, right? You're <laughs> like wow, asking yeah. for money. My emails are all over the place. Like yeah. Yeah. Just every, all the social feeds you scroll on, it's all, you know, the attempt on Trump when Kamala, yeah. right, everything's, yeah. she yeah. announces a VP that just goes nuts on Reddit. Like everything's mm -hmm. just all over the yep. place. Yeah. So you're just, people are more distracted to sure. and probably outside of a buying mindset than they typically would be when there's all this different news cycle and they're just trying to keep up with stuff. Mm -hmm. And then... I think there is some price sensitivity too happening, right? Yeah. We've seen the trend in the last like five years really been a really steady increase in initial prices on especially when we look at ClickBank with AOVs getting for like a supplement funnel and like the two to $300 range. And I think that's just starting to show some cracks mm -hmm. and we've seen some great success with some lower price funnels, mm -hmm. right? With like the more the digital info kind of products getting good traction again. Yeah. And they're, um, starting to really make a resurgence. I was pulling some data for our half one, and a lot of the new business that's grown, like a hockey stick on ClickBank, mm -hmm. is that lower ticket info product and like right. that 
27 to 47 dollar price point range yep. and they're getting really they're getting media buyers who are used to pushing high t- higher ticket supplements mm-hmm. trying these different kinds of info products now yeah. and they're getting some good success there mm. are those yeah. primarily like are they like biz oppy usually or are yeah there's some make money kinda... online ones okay. are doing well um and then there's some kind of manifestation offers that are doing yeah. really well um, mm-hmm. those those kind of hit different verticals but they can be in that kind of money mindset one yeah but it could be in different like soulmate sketch type offer too. Yeah. Um, but yeah, more like I think you're seeing a, I guess it's easier to pull the wallet for a $27 product for than sure. a $60 supplement. Oh, yeah. 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 No. Oh, sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say, I think it, it, you know, as if you're, if you're media buying, like it, it really depends on what your, who your customer is. Mm-hmm. Um, because you are going to have someone much different, like, or you're, you might be more distracted in one way, um, than, say my my dad is or something like that you know it's like everybody has their their kind of their pressure points um and what they're also paying attention to but they're also like (laughs) their reality of what makes sense for them to buy at the moment um and so if you can kind of understand and kind of crack the code and also be more relevant to whoever that you're you're targeting in your traffic um i think that's that's really one of the best ways to kind of counter that cpm issue yeah thomas one question i was going to have for you actually was like um, you know, a lot, since a lot of the offers on ClickBank mm-hmm. are supplements and, and a lot of them are, are, um, are weight loss, just generally speaking, two things, number one, this time of year, like thinking about Thanksgiving, Christmas, nobody mm-hmm. wants to go on a diet during Thanksgiving, <laughs> Christmas, yeah. right? Um, so like, that's one side thing, but also what you said about attention and like, there's so many things trying to grab people's attention in their eyeballs. Um, I'm curious if, like historically 2016 before that we had seen supplements just as a whole during an election year and during that back half of the year not usually perform as well just because like yeah Mm -hmm. the people people become more worried about that's why like survival will increase right because people become worried about other things not necessarily so much about their weight and then we'll come into Jan one, and then you know we'll, we'll come yeah, back to the, the weight loss. Typical trend we see outside of like supplements specifically, but more just like health and fitness yeah. or weight loss and things like that is like yeah, Q one January is huge, and it kind of kind of scales down to Q four, mm-hmm. and then people start ramping it up in Q four for testing for new offers, and then they launch big in Q one again. That changed a little bit over the last few years, where we actually saw some big offers pop off and kind of launch through the middle of summer and do really well. Mm-hmm. Um, so it, it's like one of those historical performance doesn't yeah. mean future success and all that kind of thing applies here, but it is a trend. Um, and part of that too, I think is the direct response versus e-com Q4 surge yeah. or just other types of products being bought, like you talked about. Yeah. Cause that is kind of reshifted my mind when we saw these products do really well from like June through December really. And then January was bigger, mm-hmm. but we've seen these things hold, but I do think it's that, um, that e-com, comes into a much bigger play like mm-hmm. Q3, Black Friday, then Q4 starts hitting and you're like, okay, people are buying different types of products now. Yeah. But the, yeah, the the health and fitness vertical definitely has a bigger resurgence in Q1. Um, and then, but that's where, like I said, survival, biz op, these are different kind of pain points that people are hitting. Mm-hmm. You see those kind of, they don't have like inverse correlations there, but they'll kind of do um, related things throughout the year mm-hmm. where this one might be scaling down, this one will scale up. But I've kind of, I don't know, Q1 will always be big for health and fitness for obvious reasons, yeah. with your resolutions, all that kind yeah. of stuff. Um, but I'm, I've kind of changed my tune a bit over the years where it's like, mm. it, they can do well throughout the year. Yeah. It's more, I think of the the offer just has to be right. Yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Cause I look outside of just weight loss, right? We have a lot of dental offers that do well. There's a lot yeah, more types of pain points, right? So it's like- Diabetes, all kinds yeah, of things. Yeah, there's all these different kinds of things that can do well other than just weight loss. Yeah. And so then we're like the hair products, right? Kind of things like that. So mm. um, those are, you're probably about to go see your family and you've been losing your hair. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. <laughs> so <if you laughs> Might need to fix, fix that, fix, yeah. yeah. Uh, that's interesting. So do, do y'all think um, that, you know, after November, obviously we'll still be in like a bit of a, e-com buying mm-hmm. kind of session, but do you think the ad costs CPMs will drop a bit because there'll be more volume there because the political spending will drop? Yeah, I, I definitely think it won't be as competitive as it was yeah. going to be right now. But I was actually kind of curious to hear from you too. Like, what did you see mm-hmm. uh, from affiliates um, after 2020 election? Uh, yeah, I mean, 20, well, it's funny. Like, I've, I've been here for eight years. Yeah. Well, I guess going on nine this winter, but um, that first election I went through, I think it was 2016, and then it was, or wait, no. 
right? Now that's hard for me. Um, but it was like this, it was very much what we're seeing now where mm-hmm. things were getting really tight. Everyone's saying the same thing. And then after the election, it kind of was like, Hey, <laughs> but it's also, you're going after the election to Q1, which is always big for us yeah. in health and fitness. So it was a bit there, but exact same thing happened. Um, survival popped off when Democrats get elected, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, all the right wing gets yep. scared. The guns yeah. are going to go away and yep. they're going to take things. <laughs> um, 2020 was a little different because I think we're kind of had some of that COVID stuff happening. Like it was, it was a different election year yeah. where like it wasn't as impactful. Mm-hmm. And I think what we're seeing right now is a lot of media buyers are newer to the game, have mm-hmm. done really well in the last five to you know six plus years, but they weren't in it for the two election cycles ago. Mm-hmm. And those, the last one, it does it does have an impact, but it wasn't. It definitely didn't feel the same as it does right now. Like where mm-hmm. those CPMs weren't either weren't as high or the economy was in a better spot and people yeah. were still spending a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 2016 Facebook ads is like a whole different thing <laughs> yeah. than so that's like the, the gold. That, yeah. <laughs> and, and then 2020, the, it was almost like a, a very short stint of where everybody was just on their phones at home. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know, it, it, it was so that, so that anomaly, you know, that, that was really interesting. And then now 2024, it's going to be really interesting to see because not everybody's just stuck at home on their phones yeah. and it's going to be, yeah, just things are more expensive yeah, the than economy's ever already. Tighter, it's like, oh. Yeah. And so it's going to be, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> so what, what like tactical things can people do right now though? Like, man, we're mm-hmm. running really thin margins. We're keeping some campaigns going. I've been hearing from media buyers where it's like, we're not trying to push too hard when something's working. We just yeah. want it to stay steady. Yeah. So they're not trying to scale as big. They just, okay, this is working. We want to diversify. Yeah. Like what? should people be doing right now if they're trying to get a bit more margin, a bit more better performance? What could they be doing while CPMs are just kind of coming up and money seems tight? Yeah. You want to take this one? Uh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would think there's two main things I would do. Um, well, number one, there's a lot of cool new things you can do with AI right now, um, just in, in the creative process, a lot of different things like that. So if you haven't already, and I'm sure people have already been doing this for the last year and a half, but uh, yeah, that's that's the first thing is I would try to see what can I do better if I'm not already. I mean, I'm already probably using. And you're that talking quite more on like the yeah. ad creative yeah, side yeah the of creative things. side yeah. yeah and just and just being able to make that more in tune with whatever audience I'm targeting and whatever offer I'm using to or having to because you want it to be interesting and relevant. So if there's any new tactics you can pick up anything like that. Um, take some time to learn. I think this is a great time for that. Um, the the other thing too is I I might look into. Um, just seeing what other ad traffic platforms out there that I can that I can do to kind of uh, uh, diversify a little bit more um, or experiment with, I think would be a terrific opportunity um, to do that right now. Maybe if you know you're uh, an experienced media buyer um, who's already you know kind of been tried and true with with you know using other platforms such as YouTube or Facebook, kind of the flagship ones in a lot of ways. Um, you know maybe kind of testing out native some more and, and seeing what you, what you can do there. Um, or some display, whatever the case might be, but just seeing if you can, you know, make something work on another platform or testing that out. Um, yeah, probably is a good time if you get something just steady Eddie. It's like, okay, how do we not just yeah. sort of scale that to the moon, but how do we get something on a new yep. platform I'm not used to? They're yeah. all their their own worlds. Like there 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 really mm-hmm. is a lot of complexity to every ad network. Um, and so you know, you look at like Taboola or Outbrain or any of those, like they all have their big things that you yeah, need to optimize. Yeah, they're under the umbrella of native, but, yeah. they, but in them of themselves, yeah, they're exactly. their own ecosystem. Yeah, yeah. and learning mm-hmm. how to do that, how to, you know, have different placements, how what works, what doesn't, um, all that is like really, uh, there's a lot of work to be done there. And so, yeah, um, that's probably what I would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I've been bullish on data for a while. I feel yeah. like that's been underserved. I mean, like, CPMs yeah. are just, not, yeah, they're so cheap. There. Yeah. <laughs> it's like $2. <laughs> so, yeah. I think I think if you fundamentally understand, like just talking about like social platforms, I think if you fundamentally, mm-hmm. fundamentally understand what the what the platform wants out of their users, then mm-hmm. the, then the answer to me, the biggest lever always goes back to creative, right? Yeah. Um, and like, I almost hesitate to say that because like anytime like there's always a question of like how mm-hmm. do I improve improve ad performance? Better it's creative. always like yeah, better creative. But like, what <laughs> yeah. does that mean? Thanks, right? Super helpful. Yeah, yeah it's like no, nah, it's not that good. <laughs> Just don't suck. Yeah, but be the better. answer. But but the problem <laughs> is like that's kind of that's a yeah. lot of times that is that the is, yeah. answer. Yeah, and and then like better can look a whole bunch of different ways. But if you understand that like okay, these people or the people that run Facebook, that run YouTube, that run whatever, they want basically they want users to be on that platform for as long as humanly possible, which mm-hmm. means 
um, they want users to have a good positive experience on the platform, mm -hmm. right? And so the more negative experiences you create, the more divisive stuff that you create, generally speaking, yep. the more you'll get penalized for yeah. it. And you, in terms of ads, that can either mean they'll shut your account down or mo most of the time what that means is if you're not um, if you're not violating a policy, it just means they make things really expensive for you. And so like, I would take a look at what, I would take a look at what type of creatives you're running and then say, look at it from the lens of like, yeah, we want to make better creative, right? So we want to make better hooks. We want to make th better visual hooks, but also like, is there a way we can make this a more positive experience, a, a, like show more positive outcomes for things. Mm -hmm. And then more on a, like an actual tactical level, like what do you do? Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that I've heard a lot in the e-com space over the last like 18 months is um, that I don't know if affiliates do this, but they will, a lot of times like people will comment on ads and I think a lot of affiliates just kind of ignore that. Um, sure, because you're running the ad, people are commenting. Right, they're just, yeah. yeah, and like, so and when I say comments, like I'm talking about like, positive or neutral comments, right? Like a lot of times people comment like, oh, this is a scam or like, okay. I hate this, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Those, there's not much you can do with those. That, that's no, leaving like filters a, to like auto delete that kind of stuff. Yeah, and that's like, like a that. negative yeah. sentiment. Mm -hmm. But on comments where you're like getting positive sentiment or neutral sen uh, sentiment, one, thing, yeah, yeah. one yeah. thing that you can do is like respond back to comments and try to like comment bait a little bit mm. to get other people to comment yeah. on it or to get them to, to comment on, the spot, on it. Yeah. But you have like a I guess a good example or bad example of that. Like, what would that look like? If, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to come up with an, an example on the spot. So, let's say you're selling like, let's say you're selling like uh, bread recipes, mm -hmm. right? Um, somebody could comment and say like, "Oh, I hate bread," right? Facebook could read that and go, "This is a negative." Like, this is a negative experience because mm -hmm. they can read that, right? So that would be like a bad thing for you. Or this these recipes are a scam. That would be a bad thing for you. But if somebody says something like oh, I have been making my own bread for 50 years. Or they say something like, I love these bread recipes or something like that. One thing that you can do as a media buyer is get into the comments and say like, hey, Denise, like what's your favorite like bread that you've made over the last 50 years to get them to respond back? Because what happens is the more, the more engagement and at that point it becomes organic engagement that happens on that ad, the more that Facebook will deem it as quality and the more that Facebook will deem it as a positive sharing experience. And so if you can get mm -hmm. Denise to like upload her recipe as like a screenshot yeah. and be like, oh, this is really great. And then Janet comments, he goes, well, this is mine. <laughs> and then like Becca comments, he goes, this is mine. It's, it, that is one thing that can tactically help drive your mm -hmm. CPMs down because they view that as quality engagements well, you get on more your ad. impressions on that, that paid too. ad, right? Yeah, yeah. that too. Yeah. So yeah. it's it's kind of the best it's kind of the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. but that's like a tactical thing of like how do you get Facebook to view this is quality, this is a positive experience, mm -hmm. thus driving. And so you're uh, doing CPM's that on lower. ads that are conversion based ads. Yep. They're just mm -hmm. responding to comments yep. like an organic yeah. page would. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. it's actually, you know, it's almost like you can think of Facebook as like a judge. And it's kind of like, if you have an ad out there that's like, like that's really, a let's just say, thought, yeah, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <That's like terrible. laughs> it, I should say, when, when it comes to, to how they perceive ads and yeah. how, they're, how they're, their mechanisms scan ads, I think the biggest thing that they're looking for is just user metrics, like on how they interact with it. Um, and, you know, we don't really know. It's a black box. So we don't really know how advanced it is or what it's really looking at. But I think, like, it would make much a lot of sense if it's just looking at how fast are people scrolling past the ad or, like, how long are they looking over the ad or something like that. And then how much are they clicking into it to just view maybe, like, the comments or things like that. Or, like, how, how long overall is their screen time on that ad? And then kind of rewarding over that. And if, if you know, that judge, let's say, is looking at that that system that they have in place, is seeing that a lot of people are just like skipping right over it or whatever, then they think it's either irrelevant or it's just like an ugly ad or whatever, which again, I should say ugly ads sometimes can be actually just totally cool, yeah. totally fine, totally great. Uh, they don't need to be like a professionally Photoshop thing, but if they just look adsy or they look just come across where they, they don't seem genuine or anything like that, that's where it becomes just kind of an issue. And uh, yeah, that, that can kind of pass things, uh, pass the cost and really increase things. Because yeah. kind of to that point, again, the reason I, I mentioned the, the judge thing, again, that's kind of a terrifying thought. But it's like, can I publish this ad on your platform? You go to it with the ad, you publish it, and Facebook's like, are you breaking into policies? Well, no. Do I like this ad? No, but I guess I got to let you know, you run it. <laughs> and it's us. like kind of their way of like, <laughs> 
yes, it's approved asterisk, <laughs> you know, because oh, yeah. it's like <laughs> you could be on there, but it's going to cost you a lot. Yeah. So that's kind of the way I see it. And so, yeah, I mean, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, I think that's one of the biggest things to focus on. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and it's true. Like it's like so to put it in like a tangible example, um, like experienced media, media buyers are going to know this. But like, let's say Thomas Knut and I are all running ads and we're all running ads to Dylan who's behind the camera <laughs> and like Dylan's our target audience. Like you create an ad, you create an ad and I create an ad wherever like Facebook deems that Dylan is going to, or uh, this is, this is the, uh, the case across most ad, uh, social mm -hmm. platforms, the, whatever that platform deems is like most likely for Dylan to enjoy and have a good positive experience out of That's who's going to win the cheapest CPMs. And that's yeah. who's so like, we'll all serve, but like you're going to pay, Five dollars CPM. You're gonna pay seven dollars CPM, and I'm gonna pay ten dollars CPM. Even though we're all bidding, because I'm clearly the, the best. Because you're clearly the best person. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> um, so yeah. like that's it, that's why like that's when I still just go back to saying like positive positive experiences. Create. Try to focus on creative, and then the answer to, as to like how do you make better creative outside of like hooks, visual hooks, things like that is just. Honestly, it's volume. Like yeah. there, there's yeah. a lot of things that we have no idea if they're going to do well or not. Oh, or like yeah. the thing that we think is going to do well does not do well at all. And then no, the thing yeah. that we think is going to suck does really, really well and beats yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. So like the answer, in my opinion, especially if, if you're trying to get something to be uh, steady or steadier, mm -hmm. is just increase volume of creative. Like if you think you're doing a ton of creative now, try to do 5X more than that. Yeah. And then- Of different stuff, right? Not just- Different yeah. stuff. And also, if you have something that's working, like variations of that, like yeah, try right. to vary, like make variations of every single thing you can. Yeah. Obviously, first five seconds, first three to five seconds is the most important. Um, but mm -hmm. I think that that is how you find steadiness, yep. is volume and creative. And that's one nice thing about the, uh, in the DR space specifically, is you can have that quick feedback loop because the sale is really geared to, to take place then and there, right after the ad. And uh, I think with a lot of other industries, um, you know, it's just something that is, is kind of a challenge too. So the nice thing about kind of DR and, and, and the way that you can kind of overcome that a little bit um, is by able to is being able to basically rapidly come with creatives, come up with new creatives, but also then being able to see what the result of those are really quick. Because I know that in, in different areas, that's a challenge where it's like, okay, I came up with all these new creatives, <laughs> right? But then like, did they actually produce a sale? Well, we won't know for another 90, 180 days. Right. Yeah. If you're an internal media buyer at an agency or something for an mm -hmm. e-com brand or something like that, you're going, okay, we're launching these campaigns. It's going to take all these touch points to happen. Yeah. But if you're pointing in more to like a performance direct response model, yeah. it's going to go, I launched this campaign and it's more a matter of the money spend and the number of clicks you're getting to really tell if it's working. Yep. So it's yep. less yeah. around the volume of time or about the amount of money you're putting into it to mm -hmm. kind of get the yeah. data back. Right? And you so should have a quicker response yeah. time on if it did convert to a sale yes. or not. Mm -hmm. And that's like the biggest thing too, because obviously you want to see not only what ads are getting the best CTR or having the best CPM or whatever, but you can get the sale, which ones are actually getting the sale yeah. the quickest too. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I've been chatting with some people that I got really curious about because it's like a lot of our media buyers that run some high volume on ClickBank are kind of like solopreneur or small team. And like to the, your volume point of creative, they get stuck on the volume piece because they're a one person shop or mm -hmm. their team isn't doing the creative piece they are or whatever it might be. And so it's like, oh, I can only make so many. Yeah. And that's when I look at that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, when I chat with the biggest scale people, they operate more like almost a performance only agency where they have a creative branch of their team yep. to outsource or they're using outsource people to help fuel that. Yep. So that's why I, almost all of my calls I have with clients where they're kind of consultative, they want more traffic, they want better traffic, whatever it might be. It almost always ends up becoming an operations conversation because yeah. it's like, well, you're doing the same thing as your competitor. They're just doing it faster yeah. <laughs> and with more volume. And, more. Yeah. and why are they doing that? Well, they've got the team to do it yeah. or they've got a process to do it or both, right? Yeah. And so if you're just trying to brute force it, you can only work so many hours a day and do so many things. Mm, yeah. But if you can actually start to outsource and build that process, you start to scale that way up. Yeah. And the, gosh, I can't remember who I was chatting with. It was a media buyer though. It's something they started doing last year, which is, I was asking like, why are you still able to scale? They're going, well, I layered in, I stopped only being a media buyer. I started collecting leads, mm -hmm. whether it was from a data aggregator or from actual lead opt-ins. And now I've got a pipeline of emails that I'm also monetizing. And they tie back those email campaigns to the ads as well. Mm -hmm. So now they know that 
here's the actual conversion on the straight ROI for that ad and the ROAS there, but they also know, but the leads from this ad have also done X. Yep. And so now I'm making money two ways. Yep. And now they can, they've actually got, you know, five to 10% more margin mm -hmm. than anyone else running just straight sale, mm -hmm. just on the um, direct conversion piece of yeah. it. Yeah. So it's like how I look at that and go, cool, how can you build in some more stability as an affiliate? Even yeah. if you're not the product owner, how can you start to add some different layers to your business that build in some stability and yeah. raise your floor a bit? So it's not, oh, this campaign's over and back to zero. I have yeah. to restart. It's okay. No, I've got this baseline running. Yeah. I've seen that. Um, I don't know if you've seen that. Like their bridge page is basically like an opt-in, mm -hmm. and then they push. So like the other, uh, uh, acting more as a seller, um, where where I've seen those working is basically just like putting the basically having that be the step to get to the checkout. So you have a general like page where you're selling a product, right? And then like you have a TSL, VSL, maybe hybrid, and then check out on the right side. But then in order to go to the next step, basically you put in your email, but that next step is just the, it's just yeah. the order form. So then there's a you, risk, right? Cause you are potentially reducing the number of eyeballs to the offer, sure, right? right? So that could hurt, but yeah, it's like, what testing that to well, see. Well, yeah, yeah, and in so in this, so in this model, like the offer is on that page, so everybody sees it. Oh, gotcha. It's just like okay. when they go to like the next step, which would be the ClickBank order form, basically, mm -hmm. um, they put their, like they, they gate it basically with an email address. Oh, yeah, and so it's basically yeah, yeah, and then pipe that through. So mm -hmm. then let, like, let's say you get like a 10% opt-in, your conversion rates are still only, I've seen this a lot with the, um, like the lower ticket digital products that yep. we were talking about, $27, $47 offers. Um, so you may get, you know, a 2% overall conversion rate on people buying the product, but you may get 10% of people who actually opt in and then you can yeah. sell them other products. You can do all kinds of stuff. So I, I've seen that over the last like 18 months, maybe. It has to have like a good natural reason to be there though. <laughs> like you can just, just be like, okay, enter your email, like just a random. Yeah, I see that with like a lot of new <laughs> like it, right? you have to like, like, yeah, exactly. Enter email, it's like, why? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. <laughs> Or like unlock the next step, you know, just yeah. like it's, I don't know, it has to be, it can't be just cringe. You got to figure out a way to make it natural and like yeah. make sense. Um, but yeah. You see, the, yeah. I see a lot with like the CPL affiliates, right? Mm -hmm. And they'll run some more of like, it's almost like a, yeah. looks like a listicle article or looks like mm -hmm. more of a blog or an article yeah. or it's like a quiz type funnel. Mm -hmm. And you're getting either getting something from that and you're actually delivering something yeah. as the affiliate yeah. to that person. But then the thank you page is after you opt in is yeah. an offer. Yep. So yeah. you're monetizing that way, but then you also have the lead to continue monetizing. Yeah. That's you know, actually right? that's actually one of exactly what we're doing on on Google Search too. Oh, um, yeah. Is like yeah. basically we'll do we'll do um, search keywords and then um, push them to a quiz funnel. Mm -hmm. They opt into that quiz funnel, go through it, and then based on what they put, we give them like three different kind of low ticket twenty seven dollar, forty seven dollar offers. Gotcha. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we have a bunch of email addresses and yeah. those those ads ROI themselves up front. Your time yeah. back. Um, yeah. The, email conversions too back to the yep. to the ads. You yep. know that this yeah. But we're able to actually on those we're able to break even just on ads. So the email conversions is just it's all profit. profit. Yeah. Yeah. Oh nice. Yeah. Yeah. Which yeah. Yeah, the affiliates going, well I don't have a other products to sell. You have an infinite number of products to sell as an affiliate right, right? right. <laughs> So you can yeah. uh, mark that list yeah. however you want to. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's, yeah, it, it is the hard part there, right? Is you're adding complexity to your business because, like, oh, now I have to figure out how to be an email marketer, not just a media buyer. And that's where it's, again, an operational conversation. It's not just yeah. an easy lever to pull, but doing it now will pay huge dividends, you know, uh, yeah. X months from now, a year from now, when you're like, oh, wow, we've got this massive source of leads that we can monetize. Mm -hmm. Well, if you do want to launch your own offer, you've got some really warm traffic there too. Yeah, might as well learn now because yeah. the 2028 <laughs> election is probably just going to be even more expensive. Um, True. Yeah. So, uh, you know, it's like we say, and we say email, right? But that could be an SMS campaign. Yeah. It could be whatever you're collecting, and there's another way to monetize and yeah. kind of get more out of the ad you're running. Yeah. Right. Instead of oh, just yeah, totally. relying on that conversion to happen. Yeah, yeah. being in like in a jack of all trades mm -hmm. uh, type of marketer, I think, is really, really important. Great time to start now. Yeah, because the I mean, gosh, there's ways to pull email addresses without them opting in, right? You use like a data aggregator or something like that. And yeah. right, you have to be a little more careful with how you actually email those people, but it's doable. Or you yeah. at least use that for retargeting. And yep. I was curious on the affiliate side, I know like this was going back in years a little bit, but when Facebook made the big algorithm changes, they kind of, or it was the Apple Facebook war, right? They kind of yeah, broke retargeting for a bunch of people. Like how do you see affiliates right now actually doing good retargeting from the affiliate side who aren't the offer owner? That's interesting. I, I kind of retargeting is just in a weird state a mm -hmm. little bit right now um, because of 
really what Facebook's done with a, a lot of their advantage plus uh, yeah. shopping campaigns and whatnot. So a lot of conversion focused ads are uh, personally, we like to run those, uh, you know, those types of campaigns a lot just because they are retargeting uh, and prospecting all in one. And I know a lot of advertisers have just kind of moved in that direction. It depends though. Like it's not that to say like retargeting is worthless anymore because like obviously you know your customer best. So like the life cycle of them might really matter to you. It might not as much. Um, but I've just seen kind of that that big impact yeah. where it's like, okay, just go for advantage plus because if there is anybody who's still interested in stuff after they've clicked on your ad, advantage plus will pick it up. And gotcha. so I know okay. on Facebook, that's one, I don't know about on YouTube side, side of things, but on Facebook, I know that's like one thing and, and advantage plus has helped us like, you know, just really kind of keep the, uh, CPMs and everything like kind of level, um, and more predictable. Yeah. I don't even think at this point we've run dedicated. Return yeah. Return right now. No, not on oh, Facebook. Wow. Yeah, it's, yeah. All, no. it's, yeah. all, it's all like advantage plus because Facebook's grabbing those and throwing them into that same campaign. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they're seeing that that they need to. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It puts them into the pool. Um, so yeah. I'm definitely in your advantage plus retargeting. I see everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it's working. So it yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. 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 No, so I met David rafting yesterday. He's like, oh, I've seen you all over the place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So yeah. I was like, is this someone they hired to like do ads? I was like, oh, no, it's a new guy. Yeah. My marketing team. That's awesome. <laughs> um, very cool. Because, yeah, that's something I've been talking to sellers more about is like, listen, if you're not doing any retargeting yourself, like from the media buys you get from your affiliates. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want to override the affiliate cookie in that case, in my opinion anyway. Yeah. You almost just want to do it on their behalf because they can't really do it as much themselves. And it might be dependent on Not down vertical. funnel, yeah. yeah. I mean, they could just do it based off engagement, but the pool is going to be is going to be massive, right? right? Where yeah, like your sellers like, are going to have the... Hey, let's retarget the people that hit the order form, yeah. right? Like, So it's like, how can you actually start to help your affiliates a bit that way and kind of lay yeah. in some campaigns? And that, I, I'm get, definitely getting over my skis as far as like how viable these things are. I just know that before iOS, people used to do that for affiliates. Like they'd mm -hmm. run their retargeting. They would not override the cookie, mm -hmm. make sure the affiliate got it. It boosts the overall performance mm -hmm. of the off their offer. So any yeah. affiliate running it has a better performance. And just better conversion rate. Would they direct them to a different, uh, yeah. like a different funnel though? Because like yeah, they, not to go page. through the yeah yeah okay yeah exactly. So they've got a different sales page that's still on ClickBank, and gotcha. then yeah, they're not overriding the. Is it more of like an e-com lander at that point? Like yeah, a more of a product. Page? Well, I guess okay. it depends where they're targeting like from. If there's someone that's hit the order form, yeah. then yeah, it's going to a shorter form right. page or even direct to cart sometimes. Yeah. Um, if it's someone who like watched X percent of the video. Yeah. Or X read X percent of the page, they'd get a different, you know, yeah, probably more you. of a sales page yeah. than a product page. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. it's always just like, it's, it is a, if you're the seller, it's like, how can I make that rising tide for every affiliate? Mm -hmm. Right. Because a small gain there ends up being massive for you mm -hmm. across the long term. Then yep. from an individual affiliate perspective, that's where I see a lot of more like relationships starting to form where they can go, hey, seller, let me, let's partner up or advertiser, right? And I will be your dedicated media buyer on a performance only basis mm. for this channel. Like I want exclusive for Facebook. Gotcha. Like, cool. We'll do it for you on Facebook for X many days. If you can drive X much volume yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. They're kind of striking those deals so they can be kind of shoulder out the competition a little bit. Yeah. On the media buying front. Um, but then the seller gets to work directly with them. They work on the campaigns and then they can scale longer as well. And ideally bigger. Yeah. It's just like, how can you go deeper with people instead of just trying to, focus on just what you're doing. Yeah, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. That makes a lot of sense. I guess like um, going back, I know you asked the question of like what happens to ad costs after the election, yeah. that type of thing. It's it's really interesting because, uh, you know, like we said, the ad costs are always up and to the right, right? They're yeah. always kind of going up across the platforms. Regardless of elections, yeah. right? Yeah, just, um, yeah. But it's it's so funny, like, um, it's so funny to to just to just watch how things adapt though, because like there's always an answer to it. Right. Like like the answer historically has always been like, okay, let's increase AOV, like supplement offers, they're gonna increase yeah. AOVs and that's gonna offset the CPMs mm -hmm. and like everything's fine. And then now what you were just talking about of like, okay, well, now we're testing into like twenty seven dollar, forty seven dollar offers, and it's the game between like AOV versus conversion rate. So as long as you have a high conversion rate on those twenty seven yeah, forty sevens. Yeah, I wanna say like there are AOVs. I mean, yeah, maybe we should say, like, let's say 27 to 67 front end yeah. for a digital. But they, it's like, I think their CPAs are getting to that like 60 to yeah. $90 range yeah. compared to a supplement funnel paying, you know, yep. these days like 100, 170 in some right. cases CPAs. Right. So but the conversion rates I have to imagine exactly. are, are way, Doubled, so it's yeah. just like, mm -hmm. 
it's always just that like math game. So yeah. I, I guess like the answer for media buyers, especially if media buyers who have been in this for like five years, four years, whatever it is, is just be willing to try stuff that you haven't tried, right? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. it's just be willing to try to roll with the punches. And then also, I guess it's as much as you can, whether that's through the ClickBank team, like connecting you or whether it's from going to events or whatever, it's just like connecting with those sellers and th- thinking about like the sellers are always going to try to make offers that are going to work for these media buyers. Otherwise, like the thing doesn't work, right? (laughs) So like the sellers have a huge number one incentive, but number two, they have a huge hand in making this whole thing work with their offer. And so like there's things you can control on the creative side, which is great. Then the other piece is like try to figure out where offers are going by talking with them. Mm -hmm. Um, Because as things increase, it's not like at some point we'll hit a ceiling and it's just like, okay, everybody's done, right? It's just (laughs) offers change, like economics, funnel economics change until, um, and the ones who are willing to adapt and get away from it. I was running my business this way with these types of offers. Um, and now I'm running them these way, this way with these types of offers. Like those are the types of things that are going to allow people to continue on as things get more expensive. Yeah, totally. Yeah. It's, it seems like, um, when I started at ClickBank, I, I met a lot of media buyers that used to be real estate agents really? <laughs> because the crash happened yeah. in 2008 um, and all these real estate agents were like, Oh no, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> it was like, it was real estate agents, mortgage lenders, like all yeah. that whole niche it was, they were just like all of a sudden out of a career. Yeah. Like, oh. And a lot of people went to all different kinds of things. So there's a, wasn't uncommon to find that even hedge fund managers, right? Mm-hmm. It'd be like, people are just like, yeah, I used to do this. Now I do this. Right. And they were yeah. doing, and so that's what I see. Kind of, it's, we're not in like that kind of recession yeah. yet. Hopefully, knock on wood. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we just had some big fluctuations of market. We did. <laughs> um, but when I look at these like really these tight parts, it's like I'm always curious what happens in the next couple of years because it's mm-hmm. like I think we're going to see a different type of affiliate coming in. Yeah. And what's cool too is the media buyers that are really savvy, that are pretty advanced in what they do, that have the teams and the structure to support. Um, or who can figure it out and can outlast the people mm-hmm. that will fall out of a tightening system are going to do really well when that next thing opens yep. up, whatever yeah. that is, yep. right? And yep. so it's like if you can bear the market in a bear market, you can really mm-hmm. explode when yeah. the bull comes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I think some some channels too will will just see like a, talking about the ad platforms themselves. Mm-hmm. Some of them might feel a little bit more pressure in the next year or two than others. Like. For one, for instance, like Facebook, I think, and I'm like, I love Facebook ads. Uh, I even have a course on it. But, you know, the one one thing about Facebook ads is that just by the basis that you have to have an account or people who are getting impression or giving you impressions on there on those ads, they have to have an account to yeah. view those ads. And like, so just by that basis alone, there's going to be a little bit of a, a choke. Sure, point. not not everyone in the world is a Facebook account. No, Mostly, yeah, but no, <laughs> no, but I mean, it's yeah. it's a it's a friction state yeah. because uh, when you when you have to, yeah, basically when you have to get that impression there, just by them being signed in in a signed in state. Whereas like for instance, YouTube or uh, a That's native a ad point, platform, yeah. like you can just go right to it and it's just there and it doesn't even know. Yeah, what. you think about, I mean, what the news cycle it is right now. It's like where yeah. people get their news yeah. and where are eyeballs going. It's like if you can serve an ad in that environment, mm-hmm. it's like you're going to have well, potentially more eyeballs there, right? Yeah. A lot of Jake and I were just talking about that yesterday with uh, X actually is mm-hmm. has a lot of, you know, a lot more users coming to the platform uh, just by what we've seen reported, but also a lot of people are just using it as their news uh, in a lot of ways too. So, um, kind of to your point yeah. uh, about getting that. So it might be, you know, how can you work in ads there that aren't tone deaf to the current state of all the crazy events that are going on? Uh, and a lot of just the, yeah, just changing news, uh, everything going on. It's, it's really, I think it might be worth testing. So yeah, just getting out of your comfort zone, trying new things. Where would you point people for like staying, either sharpening their skills up if they need some new things to look at or whether it's creative, whether it's a new channel and this could be, doesn't have to be a ClickBank resource. If you guys know of other places mm-hmm. that you like to learn from being mm-hmm. in depth media buyers, but I just, I would like to plug the media buyer course y'all have done. Cause mm-hmm. I think that's been a great course, especially for people that aren't used to like performance marketing. Mm-hmm. Right. So it's like, okay, I'm, do, I'm in an agency or I have an agency and i work a lot in this space, but I want to just have better cash flow for myself or for my company. 
be a performance affiliate, right? So mm -hmm. I think that media barrier course that y'all run, where'd be the best place to find that before we drop some other nuggets for people? The link down in the description. Oh, that's Wherever a great call. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we can do yeah, that. I would assume, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Click the link below. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, great. So yeah, we can link to that. Um, but yeah, where else do people, where would you go? Like, who do you learn from? How do you stay sharp in your skills? Um, so there's there's this one guy named Justin Brooke. Mm -hmm. uh, he's, oh, yeah. he's yeah. So yeah. he's he's been a, a really big. Um, I wouldn't say he's a personal mentor. I've had a couple conversations with him uh, just briefly over chat, but he's basically been a more or less a uh, what would you call that? Like a not a mentor, but somebody you just learn from. Yeah, you can <laughs> and, <call> yeah, <laughs> online digital. Mentor. Yeah, and so um, yeah, he's he's really been somebody that I've enjoyed following over the years, um, and he seems to always have really good foresight into different things, but also um, just kind of some up and coming tactics and different things. Like he's always been a really really. Uh, rock star uh, media buyer and uh, just overall digital marketer. So nice. I really enjoy watching uh, what he's what he's cooking up and what, what he's thinking of next. So you took uh, ads, ad skills. skills. Yeah, that's where Yeah, that's, that's where I got started. Yeah, yeah. And that's and he was the founder of that. And then he sold it, I think, in 2021. Something. Yeah, some I think year that sounds that. right. Yeah. yeah. And uh, yeah, but now he does a lot. Of, I think he's up to some really, really cool new stuff, but he always seems to have some really interesting, sometimes hot takes on things. And uh, yeah, mm -hmm. it's interesting to see. Nice. That's, That's really interesting. Yeah, honestly, the biggest thing, um, I think for more of what I look at now is, um, I just try to spend a lot of time through other people's funnels yeah. and other people's that's ads. great yeah and like that's the, for me i feel like that's the best way mm -hmm. uh, for me to learn i uh, you know a lot of the tactical stuff of like are we trying advantage plus versus this so like cbo's versus whatever um i think a lot of those are great i think the core comes down to like trying to get on trying to get in the feeds of like your competitors yeah. ads trying to get in the feeds of yeah. like a, where you want to go in terms of ads like look yeah. at the big players and try yeah. to get in their ads all the ad libraries are free so if you know who some of those people are you can get into them yeah. or if you have pages that you can know go look at what they're doing yeah. don't copy I was about to say don't you just blatantly rip them off yeah and don't blatantly <laughs> rip them off do not copy but you can learn like yeah. if you watch uh, it, you can generally tell if somebody's scaling ads up or not. And if you watch 10 different ad creatives, regardless of the ver vertical of like these, uh, you know, these ads are scaling, you're going to pick up on things that are like, oh, all of them have this or all of them have that or all of them don't do this. Yeah. Um, and so as long like if you can grab those, take notes on them and like study them for me, like that's I think that's the best way to to learn what to try, get inspiration, that type of thing. Oh, t totally. And and yeah, actually, I that's I, I don't think you can have a better point than that. Like getting in on the ground floor and understanding what people are actually doing in the trenches is probably one of the best ways um, to learn. And it's always funny going to like, I don't know, there's endless Reddit threads and forums about, hey, why isn't Facebook ads working anymore? Yeah. <laughs> or why isn't YouTube ads yeah. working anymore? Oh, well, well if you're on Advantage Plus. Threads have been posted yeah. for years, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. No, <laughs> yeah, it's so endless. Yeah. And so, like, yeah. that's, like, one of the first things people, you know, just because of their amazing SEO tactics and rankings and mm -hmm. stuff, like, that's the first thing people go to and see once they've started joining or running Facebook ads. Um, but it's like kind of a, 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 in some ways, kind of a hive mind of uh, people who are just like, oh yeah, well, have you tried Advantage Plus and have you tried, you know, CBO yeah. or ABO or what, you know, frequency, what are you, you know, they get in all these like nitty gritty details of things that, you know, I don't know, ad structure, campaign structure, all these things that at the end of the day don't, they don't uh, move the needle quite as much as what you're talking about. They're more for like tweaking and optimizing down the yeah. road versus scaling something initially, right? Well, yeah, or yeah. they just come up with these um, kind of like, the uh, theoretic uh, type of like things that do work or don't work. And then that leads other people astray. Yeah. It's funny. <laughs> like, like it's the same. It's just human nature. Like people want to be able to push these buttons in a certain way. And then now their ads are profitable. Right. Yeah. It's the same thing with weight loss. People mm -hmm. want to take this supplement. Yeah. It's the exact same thing. Yeah. Uh, the reality is, is that like, it's, um, that is usually not the, that could be like the 5% lever, right. but the 95% yeah. lever is yeah. the other thing, right? Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, and so like. It's like human psychology, why yeah. that actually works, how you're talking. Yeah. And that's Everybody's why looking you see, for a silver bullet. Exactly. And that's why you see like every like guru online who's like, oh yeah, my Facebook ad <laughs> strategy is so much better yeah. than this person. Yeah. I have the, I coined this phrase. It's, yeah. <laughs> you, they all can work. It's yeah. just like, there's, there's broader things than just yeah. like, oh, I click this button and this button and this button and then do this and set up this ad set this way. It's like, yeah. they all work. Yeah. Um, just pick one thing, 
focus on like creative, focus on your messaging, focus yeah. on the funnel. And then that's why I say like the best way to learn for the big lever is to go try to get, like look at competitors, look at ads that you know, like yeah. is getting a lot of spend behind it. Mm -hmm. um, and like just spend time with it, like yeah. dissect an ad for an hour and oh, yeah. like script it out, figure out like that's probably the best way to learn. Yeah, I um, love it. For the big lovers. Mm -hmm. so. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us, guys. Jake Canute. Yeah, I really appreciate you hopping on and sharing your wisdom because, yeah, I know we're, we're hearing on the client side all the time. Just yeah. like, wow, this year is we're struggling to keep things profitable. Margins are super tight. It's just this like constant chatter, even on the email side, like email de de deliverability. That's a big word. It's down, <laughs> right? Like all these things like people are yeah. just like, man, I think part of that's distraction, right? People are just opening email less and things like that. But yeah. Mm -hmm. um, no, so I appreciate you diving in. Is there anything else you'd want to say and sign off or let people know where to find you? Ooh, where to find me? I don't know. <laughs> where are you? In the podcast studio. <laughs> yeah. I'll be behind every ad that you see. <laughs> follow so the play, follow when the click you bank, see a ClickBank ad, ads. you can think yeah. of me. <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah, yeah. yeah follow ClickBank. Yeah. The only last thing I was going to say that I, I put a note on here I was thinking about last night. Yeah. So... Um, with AI, one thing this, I don't have any data to back this up. So take this with a complete <laughs> yeah. grain of salt. One thing that I was thinking about is like, um, the, w during an election year, especially, and as AI is in much more of a full form than it was mm -hmm. like in 2020, I would be a little bit hesitant on, I would pay attention to your ads that use AI or the ads that use AI voices, things like that. Mm -hmm. The reason being is because like, as you can imagine, like over the next couple of months during the political season, like there's probably going to be some policies coming from yep. YouTube, Facebook that are going to be pretty fakes and stuff that are probably yeah. going to be restricting a lot of AI stuff just because there's going to be so much political yeah. kind of. Um, yeah. Not using it in the right, in the right way. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> disinformation. Yeah. So I would just be I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, like, just pay attention to it because yeah. it wouldn't surprise me if you start to get higher CPMs mm. um, if you're testing stuff with AI versus like if yeah, you're it'd be interesting to test something. like a straight you know, AI generated voice ad versus yep. like a voice actor right kind of yeah, yeah. That yeah. Makes a difference or even yeah. images and videos yeah yeah could yeah. be completely wrong about it but yeah. just a hunch that well, I would when imagine I, they're when gonna I post on my person I've got like the professional profile on yep. Facebook or whatever like I have to check the box if it's AI or yeah. not like yep. yeah which I guess it's like an honor system I <laughs> yeah, it's, like, <laughs> it's like no yeah <laughs> <laughs> I'm also yeah I mean, humans can tell to a pretty good degree for sure, too, but for sure for some things. So that's a good call. Though. Something to think yeah. about. Which yeah. I, I think too, like one quick thing on that is like, you can still use like AI to, even if they do do those policies where they make it really hard to, to use that. I think like having it in your workflow to some extent, even if it's just like from an ideation perspective, like I use this chat GPT a lot for just like, what, what can I for sure. attach this pun to this yeah. or whatever I can do to just kind of like smooth in that, that ideation process. But yeah, like I think that's one big thing kind of to our point about volume yeah. earlier. So yeah, yep. for sure. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you both. If you've got any questions that I will bring that to Jake and Canute, you can email them at affiliated at clickbank.com or leave a comment if it's on YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Happy scaling, everybody.